Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and this is interesting. For those that don't know, SBI um, out of Japan owns, I believe it's a little over 10% of the of Ripple, of the company Ripple. And this is the CEO of SBI Holdings, uh, Yoshitaka Katao. And he's replying to a tweet of the XRP price, and he says, Ripple should begin preparing for its IPO as soon as possible once the SEC matter is resolved. And this is, let me blow it up here. This is Yoshitaka Katao back in the day talking about this. <laughs> いろんな安い値段で言うと。これみんなね、これリップルが今のソシャオ終わったら必ず公開するんです。今の CEO はしたくてしょうがない。クリスもしたくてしょうがないわけですから。これ何本の値段がつくかと。その 10% Okay, um, I do not speak Japanese, don't know how well that um, translation was. But what I do know is that Link2, my sponsor, has Ripple private equity on the platform. And it's not just Ripple that is, um, it's not just Ripple that's going to be thinking about IPOs. It's all of the crypto companies that are going to be thinking about IPOs. I keep telling my wife, and I'll tell you, 2025 is our year. You can feel it. I can feel it. Link2 can probably feel it. Go to link2.com, L-I-N-Q-T-O.com, or you can download their app. They have all kinds of crypto private equity on there, but they've got Ripple. Um, I was talking to my wife, you know, as XRP, the price is moving. She, she asked the same question that your wives and your husbands are probably asking if you own XRP. Well, what, what, what is your price point? When are you going to sell? Everybody's getting excited. And my answer to her, I gave her a list. This is five of the things on the list I gave her. I said, there's no way that I, I mean, I'm, I'm holding most of my XRP long, long term anyway. But I do have some people call shallow bags. I, I have a certain amount set aside to in the 2025 run that we all know is going to be awesome. And so 2024, 2025. Uh, but a lot of shoes, a lot of great shoes are still to drop. And I'm not selling anything until they do. And these are five of them um, that could send it further, in my opinion, that, that will. <laughs> First one's Gary Gensler resigning. Second one is the R Ripple lawsuit ending. The third one is, is multiple, not one, but multiple XRP ETFs being approved. Look at what look at what ha has happened with the Bitcoin price once their ETFs launched. Okay, real USD launch that's in any minute now, and crypto legislation. Then the the thing is, crypto legislation, not specifically for XRP, but Christi crypto legislation. Think about this: everything we've been through in crypto was was without any congressional legislation, which was the final stamp. Of, which is the final stamp of crypto being a part of the financial system for the next 100, 200 years. When they do that is when it is officially on like Donkey Kong and there's no stopping crypto. So that might be bigger than any of them. Here's what Egreg Crypto is saying. Um, dominant XRP dominance from 10 to 20%. Uh, let me see what the more interesting parts of this are. Uh, for a major breakout, here's the bull case. We aim for FIB 1.6, dominance at 16.69. FIB 0.702, dominance at 11.61%. 6, 
with slight deviations, 10 to 20% dominance. Then down here he says, what this means for price, Brad Garlinghouse has hinted that crypto's total market cap could hit $5 trillion by the end of this cycle. Let's calculate XRP's price. 10% of $5 trillion is $8.77. 20% of $5 trillion is $17.54 XRP. We're approaching critical levels that could define XRP's next major uh, dominance breakout. Now, let's look at this. So here's another egreg crypto where he's showing um, XRP could make mega move without warning, leaving even the OGs behind. You're not leaving this OG behind. Um, he's saying the picture is getting clearer now. Um, you can see what's happening. All right. Then we've got this. Uh, and this is a non-XRP person. XRP has shattered the accumulation phase after years of consolidation. This is the beginning of a historic breakout. The path to life-changing gains starts now. I love it. And then Santiment had put this out. XRP's now broken a three-year high, reaching $1.26 on Binance for the first time since November 11, 2021. This rally has come on the backs of key whale and shark wallets that hold between 1 and 100 million tokens. This group has collectively accumulated 453.3 million more tokens worth 526 million in the past week alone. Meanwhile, the coins that are accumulating are mainly coming from retail traders attempting to dump their coins on any small XRP rally. Wallets with under 1 million XRP have collectively dumped 75.7 million tokens worth 87.9 million this past week. Historically, any cryptocurrency trends to see positive market cap growth when its key, key stakeholders are increasing their holdings and confidence while simultaneously retail FUD fuels this growth more. This has been the exact scenario unfolding for crypto's now number six market cap asset. Brian Brooks did a little thread about Donald Trump. He's one of the guys that's up for being nominated for various things in Trump's administration. Whoever Do Donald Trump appoints as SEC chair won't be starting from scratch in his last administration. Trump built the infrastructure for two all-time high cycles. Authorizing national banks to custody crypto assets seems simple, but SEC requires qualified custodians for institutional crypto asset management. Um, he goes on and on, but I wanted to show you this video from a, from a while back of him because he lays it down. So the characteristic of Web1, if people remember their original AOL account, was an ability to look in a curated walled garden at a set of content that was not interactive but was presented to you on AOL the way that Time Magazine used to show you the articles they wanted you to see inside of their magazine. It's just you could see it on a screen. The innovation of Web2 was that suddenly you could not only read content, but you could also write content. This is when the blogosphere became a, a big thing. People remember this from the late 90s, the early 2000s. <clears throat> the reason for the centralization of the internet, of course, was that all of that activity was being monetized by a very small number of companies. Facebook, as the chairwoman, as chairwoman mentions, Google, and two or three other companies. What makes Web3 different is the ability to own the actual network. And that's what crypto assets themselves represent, is an ownership stake in an underlying network. So when you hear people talk about, for example, layer one tokens, what they mean is, this is your reward for providing the ledger maintenance services, the computing power to the network that on web one and two was done by Google, right? So now people in my hometown of Pueblo, Colorado can actually own the Ethereum network, but they can't own the internet. That's owned by Google and a few other companies. That's what the project of crypto is all about, is allowing people to directly own the networks that are have native assets that are supporting it. And that's the nature of decentralization where the token holders are the people who control the asset, okay, so not the Google. Token holders, for, for our language here on the Hill, those are digital assets, right? Which are the keys to open up the ledger for you to participate, right? right. So describe to us how those digital assets fit into this internet revolution, Web3. <clears throat> so, so, so the concept is that you have sort of application layer tokens and you have protocol layer tokens. So if I'm an owner of Bitcoin, let's say that I'm a miner of Bitcoin, somebody who actually creates Bitcoin. The Bitcoin is the reward I receive for doing the work to keep the network operational. And that allows me to own a piece of the Bitcoin blockchain. 
or take Ethereum, which is easier to understand. The Ether token represents an ownership stake in the network, but on top of that network are all kinds of apps that get built on the network, much like the apps on your phone depend on the underlying network existing that lets the phone operate. And so people will make judgments about which network is likely to win, and they will invest in the tokens in that network much the same way you might invest in Google stock because you think Google is going to scale access to the original internet. The difference being here, you can vote on what happens in the future of a proof of stake network, for example. You can get rewarded through a proof of work token for maintaining a ledger on something like Bitcoin. But the real message here is that what happens on the decentralized internet is decided by the investors versus what happens on the main internet is decided by Twitter, Facebook, Google, and a small number of other companies. Okay, so getting this, this layer of, on digital assets right, for Congress to understand this, everything is built upon that, uh, that, uh, that uh, on-ramp to this new internet. So very important for us to be sensitive to how this de develops and any actions we take in terms of uh, laws and, and updating laws to incorporate these new technologies. Yeah, it, it, Mr. McHenry couldn't agree more. And, and I think when you hear about all of the problems of different big tech companies, the importance of an owner-controlled network becomes clear. Really good clip. Now, um, what I'm going to do uh, um, in DAI XRP is that we got more XRP stuff to cover. Um, price and all kinds of different stuff. And we're going to go through that. Also, we're going to talk about the, the uh, screenings of the documentary. I'm going to be at, um, at, uh, at a screening uh, coming up. So I wanted to talk about that in there. And um, we'll go there now. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button. Tell your friends and family, away we go.